Hey, this is Dr. Graves from the CSUN Geography Department with another video tutorial. Uh, today, what we're going to look at is the Moran's Eye Tool, which is a tool to measure the level of clustering in um, polygon features in a vector map. So uh, let's go ahead and get started here. I've already logged on to uh, ArcMap uh, through the VSL. Uh, this is the default screen. We're going to go to the Moran's Eye in Class Lab, but uh, in order to remind you where it is, just go ahead and click Cancel, click File, click Open, click This PC, uh, and scroll up and down until you find the Geog Share folder or drive. Double click, uh, double click on the Graves folder, double click on the Forensics folder, double click on the Moran's I folder, and open the Moran's I in class uh, assignment here. Okay, so what you see here is a couple of uh, layers of maps. One is, um, and apologies for the bad cartography, I'm trying to demonstrate a, a specific point, so I'm going with bad cartography for the moment. The, the tracked map is on top. I'm going to turn it off, and then there's the zip code map. It's important to note that the tracked census tracts are much smaller than zip codes. Some of them um, only you know, half a mile wide, whereas the zip codes can be several miles wide, and this makes a big difference in this sort of analysis. So uh, the first thing I want you to do is go ahead and file and save um, as something of your own and in this instance the uh, the best thing to do is probably just stick it on the desktop and you can uh, you see where I've saved a bunch of stuff so I'm gonna call this Moran's eye in class uh, Steve and click save uh, the other thing that you may want to do is to go over to the file uh, drop-down menu look at the map document properties and uh, look at the default geo database here. Um, you notice that it is set at um, the H drive, which may um, cause you some problems working from home. So click on that. And what you're looking for is your geo database that is on your own uh, desktop. And again, once again, this, this um, C drive is not on your computer, it is on your virtual desktop and um, from an earlier uh, assignment we um, set up a new file geodatabase called Citrix Desktop. So you may want to use that. If you don't have one, just you know create a new one, click in there and do it. So I'm going to click that to add and click uh, apply and OK and we should be fine at this point. So let's go ahead and take a look. This map of census tracts here has a lot of very small tracts. And so when you have a lot of small vector units as polygons, then the chances for you to see clustering in the data is much higher. Neighborhoods that are defined very um, locally tend to be much more similar to those that are larger and include multiple neighborhoods. So uh, click on your Art Toolbox uh, and select from the Spatial Statistics tools under the Analyzing Patterns tool, Spatial Autocorrelation Moran's Eye. So when this appears, we're going to just use the San Fernando Valley Tracks map to begin with and the input field is the one that is displayed and that is total population for the census year. So I'm going to drag this off a little bit and, and if you look at this map it's sort of hard to see if there are is clustering. I want to zoom in a little bit and, and you'll notice that there are a number of these blue census tracts that are next to each other and the more that you see this the more likely that you have clustering so these are all census tracts with uh, probably pretty dense populations because they all have above 5,535 um, people in them 
and then you have uh, some other tracks here um, up in this corner that are all sort of similar in population. So expect to get a clustered uh, result from the Moran's eye tool. You can determine, I'm going to click generate report, and uh, that doesn't work super well um, for me right now. It may work better if I was using uh, Google Chrome. There are, as I started to say, a couple of ways uh, to conceptualize the spatial relationships. Uh, the default one is to consider census tracts or polygons neighbors if they're within some distance of each other. In the default setup, the software decides what is the threshold distance. If you leave it option, it just figures it out for you, and that's a nice way to do it. Um, but we're going to switch up a little bit from Euclidean distance, which is straight line distance, or as the crow flies distance, to Manhattan distance. Because we're in the San Fernando Valley, and the San Fernando Valley has all the streets are on a grid, and so there's almost no diagonal streets that would allow you to get from point A to point B as a bird would fly. And we're going to go ahead and leave these things alone for right now. But if you want, you can put in a distance here. If you want to say that no two census tracts can be considered neighbors unless they are uh, something like uh, nearly a mile away, you could say, okay, 1,600 meters, I think that this is in meters. So that's about a mile away. Or maybe you want to bump it up to 3,200 meters uh, because you think it should be nearly two miles away. But if it's in feet or miles, then you have to know what distance uh, you're set up in, and that's in the uh, data frame properties or should be, view data frame properties. Uh, the coordinate system is state plane five, and um, the linear unit here is meters. So, so we could set it up as you know 3,200 meters or 1,000 meters, whatever. We're going to let the, the software figure it out. We're going to generate a report. And I think we'll just let it uh, fly at this point, and we'll come back and do one more using a different conceptualization of spatial relationships before we move on. Click OK, and it's going to run. It normally takes some extra time. The very first time you run one of these tools in um, the VSL, but it seems like each subsequent um, use of the tool runs much faster. And so it appears that it finished, but I can't tell. So I'm going to click on geoprocessing, and even that takes a moment. And oh, there's my results. So I'm going to click a result, current session, open that up, spatial correlation. It gives us a bit of a, a warning that just uh, tells us that it has this message that says the default neighborhood search was so it, it went basically with 3200 meters um, basically two miles we can see here that the z-score was 2.73 which is above 1.96 which tells us that this is clustered and we can be reasonably certain because our p-value is 0 0.006 and we would be looking for anything less than 0 0.05. So the report file here, I can just double click on that and it launches a graphic of the amount of clustering that we have and so at 2.73 uh, z-score that we are um, more than two standard deviations above the average clustering if average was a random clustering. So for your homework or whatever, you grab a screen capture of this and put it in a Word file and send it off to me. So go ahead and grab a screen grab of this and I want you to be able to sort of explain what I just explained to you. So there is clustering in this data. I'm going to run this tool one more time. 
and using the same data, uh, tracks, same population, I'm going to generate a report. Uh, the inverse distance tool I'm not using this time. This time what I'm going to ask it to do is to consider any census tract that has contiguity edges and corners as neighbors. So what does that mean? So if I zoom in here on this neighborhood here and we look at this yellow census tract, any of these tracks that I'm highlighting with the blue will all be considered neighbors because they either have a flat edge or a corner relationship. You can change that around so these corners, if it's just uh, the contiguity edges, it would just be these highlighted ones and the ones that are at uh, the corners would not be. So make sure I clear the selected features here and uh, zoom back out a little bit and uh, we'll go ahead and run this tool with contiguity edges. Notice that the distance is not considered now because you have to be touching in order to be neighbors. I click OK and I'll run the tool. It only takes a moment now that it's sort of warmed up. Um, I can click here on the spatial autocorrelation uh, checkbox and I find now that my z-score uh, is 3.59 and if I look um, at the z-score of my last one it's 2.7 so by using contiguity and edges that my z-score shows even more clustering than before because in this uh, kind of case where the census tracts are smaller then you're even considering fewer neighbors so that's what I want you to do here. Uh, go ahead and uh, you can grab a screen cap, grab of that. Um, and for the in-class assignment, what I want you to do is just go and run it one more time and find one other spatially autocorrelated for the homework. What I want you to do, and the homework file is pretty much uh, very similar to this one, you're going to go in here and use this uh, zip code map instead to run a uh, spatial autocorrelation test instead for this. What you're going to do is, uh, for the very first one, um, try to figure out whether LSR, which is limited service restaurant, is that clustered or not. And you will get a screen grab of the, the your output. But let's take a look and at some of the other options for clustering analysis. This is uh, this variable is restaurants 10, restaurants in 2010, convenience stores in 2010, and supermarkets in 2010. Um, use one of those to uh, check clustering and then find at least one other. You can maybe median household income, uh, percent black folks, um, maybe percent renter, median age is usually a good one. Um, make a map of it first and then run the spatial autocorrelation tool. For bonus, use the Gettys Ord tool. So I'm going to open Gettys Ord. It's going to look a great deal like Moran's Eye tool. I'm going to run that just one time on the uh, San Fernando Valley tracks map um, and I'm going to put in there just the uh, how about just population density that time uh, and we're going to generate a report going to leave it on inverse disk now let's let's do that with um, the contiguity edges and corners and we're going to go ahead and uh, run that Wow, really high z-score there for the Gettys Ord uh, tool. Open this and it is really sort of high levels of clustering. So that's it for uh, this video tutorial. Try to find some stuff that is both clustered and dispersed uh, and on this zip code map for homework. Um, grab screen captures of it, write me a nice paragraph uh, explaining 
uh, what you've done so I know that you know what's going on.